That's better. So just spend a few minutes warming them up like you normally would. We'll all be quietly judging you. Yeah. Do you like that? It's not stable enough. It's not. No. It's real loose. Yeah. I've got one in the car that I like for stability, but I'm not a big fan of it for the rest of the fit. Okay. I know in my head what I want. I just need to find the time to get to a couple different makers and have it put together. That's looking better. And if he feels like he's a little distracted or he's a little tense, just think about some leg yields. When I first get on him, I just push him around. I was gonna say you probably leg yield the shit out of him. Oh, yeah. Just hind quarters, front quarters, back up, yep. forward, half pass. Move and think, move and think. Absolutely. Yep. Keep him on like a twenty foot circle. Yep. Just keep him in there. And then once this he's good on that twenty foot circle, you go half the arena, full arena. Yep. And that horse, man, he clocks right in. Yeah. Let's work a little bit, Meredith, on some serpentines, but we're gonna, we're gonna change them. They're gonna be a little bit more challenging than just a typical serpentine. They're gonna be in a counter bend <clears throat> with a bit of a leg yield feel. So it'll be look left, go right, then look right, go left. Yeah, that's the swing through the shoulder you wanna feel. That's going to help give you better access. Oh, that's ugly. That's gonna help give you better access to the base of his neck. Yeah. So you were talking about struggling to feel him come up in the withers the way that you can feel Ella lift. This is going to give you better access to that so you can feel it. Make sure that the leg to the inside of the bend comes well forward toward the girth as we make those changes. Yeah, and we can go pretty shallow with it. It doesn't have to be real big, clear, like 10 meter half circles or anything like that. Yeah, that's good, and then change there. There, and now think about staying about 20 feet or so off of the rail, follow the outside, follow the track. You'll be on, I don't know, third track, fourth track. And we'll turn it into a leg yield serpentine as you go. So we're gonna start here saying look in, step out. There, now look out, step in. So we want right bend, left tracking. There, now left bend, right tracking. There you go, feel that? So we're gonna ride him like that a little bit here thinking about helping him lengthen through the neck as he goes. Still a little early in the process here, a little early in the ride for us to be taking a lot of contact. So we want to lengthen that neck as we can. Yeah, you feel him get a little softer there as you lengthen that rein. Don't be afraid to let him out there a little bit longer. Yeah. And now as you go, see if you can hide from me your rain aids. Say that again? See if you can hide your rain aids from me. If you need to help him with the reins, by all means go ahead. But see if we can work primarily off the seat. Okay. 
That's better. And you feel he gets a lot more steady in that. There. Thinking about your hip and thigh carrying him into the movement. That's better. Out of the next corner, let's bring him across the diagonal to change rein. Coming across the diagonal, let him open a little bit more. Let him really reach out there. You can stretch the neck. Yeah, that's better. Keeping him forward. And then right away we think about that shallow serpentine in the leg yield idea. Yeah. Nice. You feel him starting to soften a lot through the back and open up more. At the same time, staying focused, and because we're going everywhere and asking for left and right bend, he's also getting the value of being able to look around a little bit. We wouldn't expect him to not look around. We wouldn't want him to not look around because then he wouldn't get any value from traveling around anyway. Nice much smoother. Good. And now what I would do, I would use this to prepare for a good canter transition. So I'd be leg yielding out to canter in. Not bad. And we can still think a little bit about the leg yield idea at the canter here. It's going to be a little more shallow. Yeah. Nice. Good. And then we'll come down to the trot. We're going to take him across this diagonal here to change rein again. Really lengthen, ask for a bit more energy across the diagonal there. Power up and let's go. Off we go. And then back to that serpentine and we'll prepare for another canter. Nice. Good. Let's put a little more energy in that. Yeah, there we go. Good. Nice job. And then when that's soft, we'll come back down to a trot. Good. And then he can have a little walk break. All right. How do we feel about that? Really good. Good. Mm. So it's big forward open. Big forward open. And active, right? 
We want to keep him thinking active. We want to keep him thinking what's coming up next. And in the warm up, we don't want to take too much contact too soon. <clears throat> it's really important the first few minutes that we're just working on getting the blood flowing, getting the oxygen and the blood into the muscles, that sort of thing. If we take to compressing him too soon, asking him to come into any kind of a contact or a particular frame, then we're potentially asking cold, dry muscles to come into some sort of a frame. Now, the weather's warm enough that it's not too bad, but cold weather especially, be careful with stuff. Um, and what that's going to do is just cause him to compensate and you know move in ways with stiffnesses and braces and things like that. Starting out, we just say, "Hey, man, just let's get going, right? Let's move." Because uh, he's good-minded enough, especially that you don't have to worry too much about that. It's just move and fiddle a little bit. Okay. All right. So, have we played nope. on this triangle at all? Okay. Bermuda Triangle. You'll be lost on it for days. All right. Imagine we've got a gate, a solid wall, between each of the cones, okay? And you can kind of see where I had drawn the wall when we had it set up on a smaller pattern. There's a gate in between each one, okay? Dead center between each one. At the gate when you come out, you're either going to be making a left circle or a right circle. Okay. Not two lefts, not two rights. Okay, so it's left and right, you know, one and then the other, rather than any continuous circles. As you come into the gate, you've got to decide which one you're coming out of. It doesn't matter which one you're coming out of, okay? But if I'm, say, I'm making a right circle here, I want to stay the same distance from the cone as I go. I already know what gate I'm going to be going into, so before I get there, I need to plan what gate I'm going out of. I'm going to go out this one. I made a right circle. This one has to be a left circle. Okay. As I come through, again, I'm hunting for the gate. As I'm riding through, preparing him, keeping the bend. Now I've got to think which one I want to go out of next time. It can be either one. And it has to be right. It has to be to the right. Okay. okay. Um, we end up a lot of times with riders getting kind of stuck on just two cones. Yeah. So don't always go through the same gate. Okay. Right. I think but. that makes sense in theory. We'll see yep. how it. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Absolutely. Do we just do this to walk? Do you want to do this? Um, you can go ahead and start it at the trot. For real young horses, real green horses, we would start it at the walk. Sure. You can totally do it at the trot. Eventually, you'd do it at the canter. Right. Every change happens inside the triangle. Whether it's a change of gait, change of bend, change of tempo, okay, whatever. Every change happens within the triangle. Okay. Totally. But in a light way to begin with. Ah, well that sucked. <laughs> Jesus, pull your head out of your ass. Like the Kool-Aid man, yeah, you just come crashing through the wall. That's funny. There you are. That's better. So see, it's quite a bit of planning ahead. It's an exercise in organization, for sure. Good. Good. Trying to stay the same distance from the cones as we go around. Good. Ah! We missed the gate, crashed through the wall. There goes the Kool-Aid man. That was a last second decision. You had no idea where you were going when you went in there. So you got to plan ahead. Ah! What is that? Oh, it, Good. Plan farther ahead. Which gate are you coming out of? Good. Much better. You feel how that in the triangle you got prepared? Which gate are you coming out of? Good.
Which gate are you coming out of? The right one again. Good. And now I want you to think about changing your diagonal inside the triangle through a double rise. Changing the diagonal through the double rise is really helpful for a young horse, a green horse, an unconfident horse, one that gets sticky in the back or tense. Rather than the double sit, where the double sit, there's that double impact that pushes us down onto the back. The double rise suspends us a little bit longer. Good. Good. Give a little more forward in the neck right there. The contact is okay, but we want to keep the neck a little bit longer. So reach the arms out just a little bit farther. You want to remember your hands belong to his mouth, your forearms belong to his neck. So if we want the neck a little longer, the forearms can push out a little bit in front. Good. Closing the fingers. That's a really pretty wrong diagonal. Let's make sure we change that. <laughs> you were just the husband, there you changed you it again. Diagonal. Oh, we do diagonals and they're all about the balance. <laughs> there you go. That's better. And now as we come out of the gate for the next circle, let's make a large circle around the whole operation. So if we were following our tracks and looking at this from above, it would look something like a Venn diagram. Good. Nice little bit, he's coming a little low in the stretch right there. He's at what we'd call the maximum for the stretch. Any lower and he can't help but be heavy on the forehand. There. And that's simply because the hind leg, when they get lower than the eye at the level with the elbow, the hind leg can't reach far enough forward to compensate for all that weight being on the forehand. The head and neck is about 10% of the horse's body weight. So if it gets down too low, there's, there's nothing he can do to help counterbalance that. Good. And then we return into the triangle. Pick your gait as you come around. Nice job. Make sure you change your whip also inside the triangle. It's a lesson in organization. Nice. Good, and then as we exit the triangle, we'll circle around the whole operation again, going to the right this time. Good, and now think about riding his back on the circle. Does that make sense when I say that? I think so. so when we were warming up, you were having those, those serpentines in a little bit, the counter bend uh, leg yield. Think about shaping his back onto the circle the same way you were doing that. There. Good. Keeping the inside rein a little bit more open. Yes. There. Steady with the outside rein, inside rein opening to show him the way. There. <laughs> that 
That's good. Yeah, so set your hands, set your aids, and send him forward to the bridle. Good, but don't get too fast. Okay. When he feels soft and steady, we'll give him a walk break. Nice transition, good job. And he can go all the way to the buckle for the break. All right, what do you feel in there? Lazy. Lazy, okay. Like, my legs are burning because I'm having to push him along. You're getting desperate. Yes. And I feel like I'm tapping. And okay. it's like, it's like barely pressing the gas pedal just a little tiny bit. But okay. he's, not, he's not like actually getting on board and keeping that going himself. Okay. Um, sometimes I get a little over dramatic with the stick and minty bucks. So it's kind of a fine line between like, ah, go forward. You know, and then he says, go to hell. Okay. Or, you know, I'm like, please go. Please go a little faster. Gotcha. And it's just trying to find that balance. Now we played with Ella with the albatross, didn't we? Yes. I tried to do that with him and I didn't have my sequence down. Okay. You know, so I sat up with my feet and he didn't go. And then I didn't come through with my, I didn't take my leg off. I just How'd that work out for you? Um, I think it was fun. Was it funny to watch? <laughs> I'm a little more mindful about that one now. Good. Um, so how do we use the legs for the albatross? Take them off. Yes. Touch, go. Okay. Right, so the legs are hanging casual to begin with. Touch and go. And on the go, that's when the whip comes in. Okay. Is this what it seems like with him, like, trying to get him to elevate? and go forward into that is, is where I have issues because he, he's so comfy to just get in that like roly poly western yeah. jog and lope like he's so he's comfortable uh -huh. you know so it's like there's not really a, an uncomfortable place to be where you're like wow this is just really a mess okay we're going to play with something go ahead and continue walking there so that he cools down a bit more <clears throat> We may or may not. Did we play with half steps with Ella? What's that? She'll get into that trap of more leg. Just and they, and then, yeah, like you said, the albatross thing, she just murders the hell out of him. She's like, hey, go, and he goes, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't forward. Gotcha. That's pretty amusing, but it's not oh, amazing. It's not well, it is when it's not us sitting on him doing it. Just want to keep walking? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And we're going to follow the outside track. Good. We'll go pretty close to the fence as we go around. So take up a little bit more contact. I'm just going to turn that thing off. Good. Now slow the walk. Good. Keep the walk nice and slow. Now keep the walk nice and slow. Keep the walk nice and slow. Soften. Soften. Give. There. Good. Nice and slow. Keep him against the rail. Good. Nice and slow. And release him into the slow walk. Good. So you see what we're doing is we're saying stay slow, engage, get active. By the way, stay slow. Okay. Right? Giving him a little extra in there to be okay. Okay. 
to the track. Slow. Slow. There, and slow and walk, give him some rain. There. As he gets energized, he's going to find there's slack in the rain waiting for him. Not a huge slack, just, just a softening really in the hands. Once we get past the red gate, we'll play with the same idea. So let him walk low and stretchy and relaxed there. And we'll pick up. Slow, really close to the fence. Slow, slow, slow. And walk slow, soft, good. And again, slow. Slow. There, and relax, soften, good. So you feel how we start to get the half steps in there, okay? Now we're gonna play a little bit with your leg. Okay. As we ask for that to happen, your leg is gonna come back here, soften up. Okay. It's gonna wave. It's not gonna make contact with him. It's okay. just gonna wave and it's gonna be one, two, one, two. And it's both at the same time. One, two, one, two. Yeah. Yep. And you kind of reach it back like imagining you're gonna reach back to the back corner of your pad. Okay. Yep, okay, and off we go, tally-ho. Good, slow, and we'll start to ask. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Wave the legs. And soften, and pet him, and walk. No, 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 no running away. Good. This is the thing to be the thing when I ask him, hey, you know, like, let's get in, like, a bigger walk in the contact, he just stays to five. Yes. And it's just, an, I mean, I know he's avoiding having to, you know, step up and really reach. Mm-hmm. Well, some of that's confidence in the balance also. Good. As we come up to the track, we're going to ask for that again. Stay close. Stay slow. Back. And walk slow. Good. We're going to do it just beyond my speaker there. So you're going to take him really deep and you're going to go to the outside of the mounting block. So we're going to use the arena. Most of us end up losing about 25% of our arena because we don't ride deep enough in our corners. It does. That's the tricky deal. So slow, relaxed, not that slow. There you go. Draw the legs back and one, two, one, two. <laughs> Don't let him kick me. Bring that inside rein out here. Out here. There you go. Good. When he gets to wandering in with the hips, okay. inside rein comes open this way. Okay. Goodness. Sorry, I'm not trying to kill you. I really like Yeah, that's what they all say. I'm not really trying to kill you. Okay, we're going to do it again. Slow. Good. Legs back. Slow. Good, and relax and walk. Yeah, so you feel the difference that time, mm -hmm. how much more soft he was and confident in that idea. Yeah, he, like he started to go forward and then he did that contact and then immediately he kind of came back. Yes, Stop. so now see if with your seat we can keep him slow so that he doesn't hit the contact, right? Okay. But we keep the contact floating with us. Ready, and go. That's better, soften and let him go forward. Nice job. One more time as we come to the light pole up here. Keep him against the rail. Use the arena. There. Legs back and start to wiggle. Open that. Yeah. Slow down. Use the whole arena. Go down deep into the corner. Deep into the corner. There. As we come out of the corner, we're going to ask for that. Keep him straight. It does feel different than it does in Ella. Okay. So now you're going to begin to ask for this. So you're going to do that. 
is your whip is going to come straight back, yeah, so that you can tap on top of the hip. We'll do this. Oh. Go deep into the corner again. We're going to do it at the light pole over there before the next corner. So you've got plenty of time to prepare. Okay. Deep in the corner. Good. Nice and slow. Nope. Nope. I was just being particular right there. Okay. And I'm going to hang with you so that I can help if necessary. Good. So slow, prepare the slowness, prepare your seat, rock the legs back and start to wave as you tap. Use the fence, there you go. See the thing is, if we don't use the fence, he's got a lot of room to wander and get lost. Good, and go. There, that's fine, yeah. We'll do that again, two more posts ahead. Slow, soften, draw the legs back, and go. Try to tap the top of his tail. Tap, 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 tap. Yeah, that's it. And then let him walk on the buckle. Feel the difference right yeah. there. That was really good. So that's a way to create a little bit of engagement to get a little bit more lift in there. Okay. Eventually, if we so desired, we'd be uh, creating pee off from that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. As we come up here, let's ask again. So shorten the reins. And this, whenever you take this, this many times in one session. This is. One. One, two, straight. Keep him straight. Keep him straight. Keep him straight. Slow down. Slow down. Where are you going? <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. Don't be so quick. And now go forward. Good. Right up here again, just past the speaker, we'll start to ask. Round, slow, draw the legs back, and go. There, good, go forward. Good. Good. Stay deep into the corner. Three posts out from the corner, you're gonna ask. As soon as you feel him come up into that, you're gonna soften the reins forward into a slow, relaxed walk. Ready, and go. That was shit. Circle back. Trying to give you a good camera angle shot right there. Just circle back deep into the corner. So remember, think slow, active, let's go. Slow, active. There I am dancing for the camera. Karst, I gotta think about these things before I do them. I know he's gonna find a way to use that against me. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> All the different songs that right? right? Deep into the corner. Right, yeah, and he's got you for design help too, see? Good, deep into the corner, round and soft and low, and there, and walk. Nice, good job. You can do that one more time at the light post up here, but you're gonna try to double the energy. Keeping the speed the same, but doubling the energy. One, two, one, two, tap, 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 tap. That's better, now we're talking, good. At the next light post, same thing, preparing a fence post or two ahead of time. Remember the intensity of the leg never changes. The whip can tap, but we wanna make sure we're tapping up on top of the hip. Good, legs back and go, bigger. Bigger, slower, bigger, tap, tap, tap. Yeah, and then forward at the walk. Pet him. Good.
Yeah, no. Well, now we can't pose. Now we've got to ride for a horse. Not for a judge. Right. This, you know, it's just, you're going to do this in the hunter ring, right? But it's certainly going to give you a lot more energy, more engagement, a lot better bascule, right, for the ring. Let's come to a 20 meter circle. In fact, we'll just go right around the cones. That'll be the easiest way to do it. We're going to come up to a trot. Suddenly your half halts rebalance in a whole different way, don't they? Okay. Let the neck come longer. Push the forearms out there. There you go. Good. All right, now give this a speed in miles per hour. I don't even care what the number is. Six. Six, okay. Good one to start with. So, starting at the six, now show me seven. Good. And now eight. Yeah. Good. Ten. Nice. Let's go 12. That's pretty nice. And now let's go back down to 10. Good. And 8. And the 6. Good. Now let's take that from a 6 to a 4. Yeah, good, okay, now back to the six. So we start playing with the tempo a little bit, playing with the energy. Take that up to the eight again. Good, and a 10, and then the 12. Back to 10, good, back to eight. Back to six miles an hour. Back to four miles an hour. Nice, there. Good. And then back up to six miles an hour. And eight. Now try this. Keep the eight mile an hour speed, but ride him to 10 mile an hour energy. Feel a difference in his back start to come up there, okay? Keep that eight mile an hour speed, go to 12 mile an hour energy. There, tap, tap, a little more in the energy department. There you go. Let the neck out a little more forward. He's getting a little compressed there. Let him out there, reach forward. Yes, there. <clears throat> you see, your core is gonna dictate a lot of it. Your thighs can help dictate a lot of it. Keep the energy going. Yes, there. Energize, energize, energize. Yes, good. Now we go 12 speed and 12 energy. Ah, and that's normal. Pet him for that. That's normal because we're playing now within the balance. Good. And now we come back to his six. Six speed, 10 energy. Thank you. 10 energy, it's a little more energy. There. You'll start to feel he'll get a little more buoyant in his back. Good, open your inside rein here, open your inside rein. There. Good. When he gets to bobbling along with his head, a lot of times it's because that inside hand is getting too close in and getting him stuck. Keep it open more toward me. Good, gotta keep those shoulders open and that's how we'll do that. Good, 12 speed with 12 energy. Oh, bugger. Good, ask him to lengthen the top line. Release the outside rein. There. Good, release the outside rein again. Keep the inside rein open toward me. There. Good. 
Good. Now keep the 12 energy, but come to an eight speed. So keep the energy, but slow. 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 Tap, tap right there. Say, no, no, no. We can't go slow in energy. Just to speed. So we're going to be revving the engine, kind of. A little slower. More energy, though. Keep him round. Help him soften. Inside rain opening. Yeah. There. Good. And now, whoop, no, nope. more energy there. That's better. Feel that. And now we walk. Nope, that sucks. We can't, we're not going to walk. For that. Get the energy and the balance there. There. And now we close the thighs into the walk. Good. Good. Okay. So that playing with the gate there, I know that's going to help Ella too. Yeah. I was thinking just as much about her in that as I was him. <clears throat> playing with playing with the speed within and the energy within, that's going to be a really good way for you to start getting him feeling back on you uh, and just really using himself better, okay. you know. Thank you. Absolutely. There's generally, there's the trot a horse will give you and then there's a working trot, yeah. right? And so that's where we let them start out, they pick their own speed. Right? And that's why we set the number to it based on what their natural speed was, you know? And, and the number doesn't matter, right? But think in your mind when you're playing with this exercise of what that base number was, okay? Um, and six seems probably like what's going to be his base consistently. Uh, so that's good. That's good. And like I say, the number itself doesn't really matter. It just gives just us little increments to think about. Yep, exactly. And we do that at, at the canter as well. You know, we can play within that at the canter. Um, yeah, cool. Good. Thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, remarks, requests for clarification?